So we're here in Manchester, UK. I'm here with Zuza uh, from Prusa, and we've squirreled away to a nice quiet room because we have the Core One right here. It's a quiet printer, needs a quiet room. So we're gonna go over this machine today because there's a lot of cool little design aspects to this machine that make it really stand out compared to a lot of the other enclosed Core SY machines that are currently on the market. So Zuza, what's special about this? The number one feature, I don't know, fish. It's no, got a fish. I mean, there's no, it's <laughs> too many cool features and I have no idea where to start. So let's start with what I can see. The precision steel frame, laser cut steel, uh, then that's then shaped by like a bending machine. So there's no frame, like there is no extrusions and then you put panels on it. The enclosure is the frame. Like it provides, the, it's two in one. It's laser cut, this whole Core XY gantry is one square that's laser cut. So it's always square. You just attach all the things to it. So th this is one complete assembled unit and then you put your XY motion system on it. Yes. And so it's all square. It's all square. And then you put the rest of the you, printer you, around Yeah, you, if you take out, it's basically you can imagine as two L's. So if you take out this whole front thing from L, and then you can easily with like, you take one screwdriver, one Torx, you remove the two side panels, and you have the naked printer basically, and everything is easily accessible. And I think that's really, you mentioned like, what does, what's different about it? Well, all of the Core XYs we tried, it's a little bit of a pain to get to a part, to grease something, replace it, hack it, mod it. So here, really super easy just to remove, you remove two panels, and you have basically access to everything and it's one screwdriver, really easy. And just looking at it, um, one thing I'm really noticing compared to a lot of previous Prusa machines is there's really not as many printed parts on this compared to some of the previous machines. Way fewer, have. yeah. So you can see a lot of like uh, PCCF, polycarbonate with carbon fiber, uh, both on the motion system uh, and for example, the fan duct, but even on the motion system, most things are again uh, steel, uh, which is extremely rigid and doesn't care about temperature, which is nice. Yeah, so you're not running into the issue that, for example, us was war on, where our frame is extruded aluminum and then we have metal rails, steel yeah. rails, and you have dissimilar metals, they exactly. expand differently with different temperatures. You don't have that issue here. Exactly, it's steel on steel. Uh, same goes for the linear rail on the uh, on the x-axis, so steel on steel, so the thermal expansion is the same, which is nice. You prevent some tiny little warping or something. And this still has a lot of parts commonality with the previous Mark IV, It's correct? funny, I think if you look at this machine and maybe you haven't seen the introduction video, like I think it's kind of mind-blowing, even to me, for, for me still, that you can convert your Mark IV S into this. So it shares, and when people ask, oh, but how many parts do you actually reuse? Like it's shocking number of parts. So yeah, because we have the bed. The bed. The tool head. The whole print head just with different mounting printed parts. Same rods. Same rods, which it's the same Z axis threaded rods, but you get 27 on the Z axis instead of 21 because score XY, just cleverly engineered, it lets you use the, the full length. We just, well, we're just, just going to ship you one more rod, so you have three of them. It's three motors, there's no belt or anything. So they're three independent motors, but they're still on one driver. One driver, so okay. we do the leveling against the like steel frame, okay. same thing as on the Mark IV. And then bed mesh to take out any inconsistency. Yes, exactly, okay. the loads are like, I love the load cell. Now, one thing with this chamber here, because you can, you say the chamber gets around 55C, but it technically could go to 60. I guess it could go even higher, and I think some people will just go like, I don't care about warranty, and they will just add additional heater. It's fairly easy to add things to this. We have the GPIO. There's a new expansion board, which lets us run the heater thermistor, the chamber thermistor, the chamber lights. Uh, there's light under the heat bed. There's the two fans in the back which are actively uh, actively talk to the chamber thermistor. I've heard that, for example, in Clipper, this is something that's still a bit iffy to, to do. So yeah, since we run a free RTOS firmware with some pieces of Clipper motion planner and lots of lots of custom things. So we implemented our own thing where we check the, cham the chamber temperature. In Slicer, we actually now set nozzle temperature, heat bed temperature, and your desired chamber temperature. Yeah, so you have fans at the back here, so if the chamber gets too hot, these fans will kick yes. on and start circulating Which air. is a big deal with PLA. Like, if you can imagine yeah. our farm and like 600 of these, if we had to leave the door open for any like, even PETG like actually likes nice cooling. So if we had like 600 open doors and the farmers would be just constantly yeah. walking by, it would be, 
a disaster, and I think even people at home will really, really appreciate it. Also, when Uncle Jesse gets the door. <laughs> it is Uncle Jesse proof. It's fine. Eat. Oh, cool. Okay. And it exploded. Also, so, it's reversible too, right? You can you can have the door open either oh way. Oh boy, thing. you don't, would not believe how uh, big of a like constraint for the design team it was. But we always try to go for function over form. So just like on a like fridge, you can flip the door to the other side. Uh, the graphics still work, which is what I'm talking about when I <laughs> when I mention like kind of my my pain in this, which was the design that it still works. And then also speaking of design, there you you've. Take advantage of the fact that because on, on a Core XY, you're going to have dead space. Yes. And you've taken advantage of that where you essentially reduce the internal volume as much as possible. So one, you don't need an additional heater to get up to those chamber yeah. temperatures because you have a much lower volume here because you've bumped in the corners here, you've bumped in the back for the electronics. The temperature uh, goes up really quickly. And so the first few layers always basically in contact with the bed anyway, so yeah. they are like extra heated. And by the time you're printing like the fourth or fifth layer, like the fans will probably be like venting heat out instead of you wanting more heat in. And yeah, like you mentioned, I, it's like one of those things which once you see them, you're like, oh, it's like obvious. Yeah, because the less volume you have, the less the heat. Yeah. Because one thing a lot of people don't realize is pretty much all printers have a chamber heater. It's called your bed. That's yeah, pumping out a couple hundred watts of heat. It's 150 watts. It's like yeah. we had a big discussion about is it like actively heated? And we're like, well, there's like 150 watt heating element that's like heated to 100 degrees. So we call, we, we like to say active chamber temperature control, which is, I think, yeah. the most appropriate. Like it heats up, but we went. The yeah, and you do have little vents at the top here that you can open and close. Yes. So if you're printing PLA, you open these up, you run the fan yeah. at the back, it'll keep the chamber nice and cool, and you can still keep the door closed. Because, yeah, as it turns out, if you want to blow air out, you actually need to somehow get air in to generate airflow. And then if you're printing ABS or anything yeah, that needs higher temps, it. you just close it. And then on the side here, you've taken advantage of that space now, and that's where your spool holders go. So instead of being in the back or somewhere sticking out, it's the perfectly flush. I mean, of course, if you get a two kilo spool, but still it's going to be less sticking out than normal. So yep. the spool is just nicely in here. And on the other side, it's the perfect space for anything you can imagine. Yeah. And you have one on the floor where you've taken advantage of it, where you have a tool holder on one yes. side, and on the other side, you've turned this into an actual dry box with a yes. dehydrator and but whatnot. Honestly, I can imagine a whole world of both community, but even commercial accessories. Like if you just, we already released the step files of the side panels before the, even the first machine is shipped out. And there are already people working on the mods. Yeah. But I can imagine even like a commercial things where someone will sell a... Actively heated dry boxes. Exactly. Or maybe down the lines, there's a, a different version of the MMU that's integrated that or something. The buffer is integrated yeah. in it. Even internally, we have yeah. a ton of ideas which we, what we want to try with it. And again, with it being magnetic, you don't really have to worry about screw holes because you just throw a few magnets on it and it'll just stick. Oh my god, the magnets are so satisfying. Because this now has a camera option too. Yes. And it just sticks in with magnets. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, like, it's magnets. Like, it's funny, like, how we are still like little kids when it comes to magnets, but being able to just stick any holder, towels, nozzle holder, uh, IPA, anything to it with magnets is very satisfying. Now on the back here, is there anything back here we can talk about? It looks like two power supplies. It does look like two set power supplies, but it's it's power supply and electronics. I would right? say this, I would call this another like uh, clever integration engineering thing when like, our engineers are working on it. And even when I first saw it, I, I was like, oh, it needs additional power supply. But no, we needed a metal enclosure for the electronics. And we already have it for the power supply that Delta makes for us. So we just used the same box and embedded the electronics in it. You have the Wi-Fi sticking out from it. You can remove that if you're working in, for example, a company environment. Uh, and there's even like a little pass-through port for some accessories. Yeah, you got a little hole there too if you there's need to run anything. There's a USB-C for power, for example, for the camera. But again, it's uh, like, heck it, do whatever you want with it. You can even do custom firmware for it and we will still uh, keep Is this warranty. the same controller board as the Mark IV it has? It is the same board. I think you, we initially even, you can run like Mark IV as firmware and it will be fine. It's just going to be very confused about its <laughs> motion system. But yeah, it's the same board, uh, but with the expansion board. The expansion board is cool. It plugs into the MMU port. Uh, 
but it has another MMU connector on it, so it works as a pass-through, but then we use it to... So you, you have your Mark IV-S and you have no slots for the, all the things in the chamber, so you, you keep your board, we don't have to ship you a new one, you, you don't have to throw a board away, and you just plug in the extra board and you can control all the things in the chamber. And also, just, just something I'm gonna add, um, I hopefully it comes across on camera, the LEDs in here are super bright. Right, like, right. like even, th this is a, a smoked uh, plexiglass yeah. or? Yeah, it's a plex oh, like a toned plexiglass. Yeah, but it, it's it's smoked, but it, it's still like, even with the door closed, very bright. you have very good visibility in here. And the first thing I was kind of worried about when I saw that there was a cross beam here was a little worried about the fact that, you know, on some other machines, when you have this front cross beam, you can't really see your first layer going down well. Where on this one. Shouldn't be a problem, yeah. It's actually up above your nozzle height. So when the bed is all the way up at max yeah. and you're laying down that first layer, you still have good visibility. And also because it's the next router from the Mark IV-S, but because it's on a different motion system, we were able to put the fan to the back. So you, again, gain that nozzle visibility, which is very, very nice. You can actually even control the, uh, the chamber lights. They're very bright. We like to think about the printer as a, like an art display. Do they have RGB? Uh, these are white. The RGB is the LED status bar under the bed. Oh yes, when it's printing, there is a status so bar. So it's funny because the bed, it's you know, bed goes down as the print finishes. So this is like a physical progress bar. <laughs> so if you if you are like you know really far away, you can see the LED bar just going down. And if there's a color change, it will change color. It can flash. Uh, and again, I can see some people modding it to do some other cool. So, so speaking of modding and expandability, just to touch on, so this is compatible with the existing MMU3, so if you want yes. to do five color multi-printing, it top. just attaches yeah. right to it. Still, the everything that's compatible with the Mark for us is compatible with this, so we have the GPIO board, which is like a little Arduino, you have pins, you can control them, they even can work as input, and I think we are still yet to discover what weird like conditional g-code runtime injection things we can do but I, I can imagine you could hack it to have like a physical button for oh color change now or maybe for farms just like change filament i don't even want to interact with the with the ui i'm just going to have a physical button for uh, changing the filament to another spool nice. and yeah you can control the gpio I, i'm really hoping someone will like turn this into like a clap trap <laughs> that's gonna m move his arms and he's gonna be afraid of stairs whenever the print finishes or something. Yeah, something. yeah I, I got a feeling a lot of people are gonna take advantage of the GPIO and these these empty spaces on the yeah, side yeah. and somebody's gonna turn this into a speaker too, probably. I exactly, it's asking <laughs> for it left, right, you can have the subwoofer underneath. Well, you, ha you have one on the show floor that's actually up on some feet, yeah, so you yeah. have a little bit more room underneath. Exactly. <laughs> actually, you can see the stepper motors but that's how much space there is underneath. They're just NEMA, NEMA 17s. So there's plenty of space underneath for like extra electronics if anyone wishes to integrate anything with this. And also, since we're using all the parts, the sheet, like if you have four printers and you bought extra sheets, they will all fit. Sure, they will have different graphics, but who cares about that? Yeah, it's, so a, it's the same bed. You can reuse your sheets, you can reuse your nozzles, all the extra spares that you bought, the thermistors, you can still use all of that. Yeah, if you already have a Mark IV with an MMU3, yeah. you can just take the MMU3, move it right over. Oh my God, it's I, very compatible. I hate when I buy a new 2D printer and it's exactly the same, but for, exa for some reason they changed the dimensions of the colors color refills by two millimeters so they don't yep. fit. So here you can reuse really. It, it's all compatible. Almost everything. It is a very clean build. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these. And also um, it's quiet. It. It's quiet. It is quiet. It's yeah. very quiet. The only thing that can be loud are the fans in the back. Fans are loud. It and is what it is. They have like extra way more flow than needed because we can imagine putting like really big filtration behind and when that, when you need that positive airflow. You need that positive airflow, but otherwise they are fairly quiet. Somebody, if they're probably just, if somebody is running it standalone like this, I got a feeling probably somebody's probably gonna put Noctua fans in there at some point. Oh yeah. I mean, we love Noctua, so if Noctua if you're watching this. So awesome. Anyways, thank you, Zuza, for the one-on-one -on -one look it. on the Core One. Coming soon. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to give a huge shout out to Hugh Forge along with LDO Motors for sponsoring this year's Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Fest coverage. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check out LDO Motors and print some cool stuff with Hugh Forge. Cheers.